Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. So with that in mind, let's jump right in to this week's episode of Becoming Something. <laughs> What's up, podcast? Oh, it's your boy, Nate Hilgen Camp, live from the podcast studio, Waco, wow. Texas. We are so excited today. Um, we? Yeah, it's me and Kathy. <laughs> okay, hi. You didn't introduce me. Oh, this is Kathy Davidson is on the podcast today. What's up, guys? Kathy, you are about to give birth. Like right now. And I sure just, hope not. You just said that you would deliver <laughs> Although the baby. I, do, I did just say before we started recording, <laughs> I feel pretty confident I, I could deliver and your here's, baby. <laughs> here's also what you said. Do we have a vacuum cleaner? <laughs> and I don't know if you know how babies if, come out. If baby girl gets stuck, we, we got a vacuum Ooh. and it'll just suck her right out. Nate, I like I'll trust put, you I'll put a on a baseball glove and catch life. her. Yeah, trust you with a lot of things. Delivering my baby, not high on the list. I, I feel like if I if my water broke right now, you would just run around in circles and scream. No, 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 no I wouldn't. I would, I would, I would start would a bunch do? of group texts. Yeah, you would video everyone. it. You'd be like, Kathy's having your baby. You tell my. That's how you would. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I heard we're having someone on the podcast today. I heard that too. Do we know who it is? I don't. A few know. weeks ago, we got caught off guard. It's oh, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> We're not having a former porn star. <laughs> Although, if you haven't listened to that episode, it oh was my phenomenal. Gosh. Phenomenal. Today we're so having good. a pastor. His name's Jonathan Pakluda. He's out of Waco, familiar. which is interesting because we're in Waco and like. Have you ever seen him? Met him? I uh, apparently he's like really tall. Oh. So. Uh, I, I don't know a whole lot about him. Everyone's tall but, compared uh, to me, you know. I, I, I assume, I guess we're zooming like, him in or something. Do you think his book is good? I don't know. We're about to find out. Oh, my gosh. Should we just let anyone on this podcast? Yes, yeah, seriously. Well, I think we should bring him in. I'm I'm excited to meet him. Totally. I mean, he's like a Heard hero to me. things about uh, him. I mean, I just think it'll be really interesting to see how someone... Like he has a community college degree and he wrote a book. I don't even know if he can if read he books. If he can do that, then there's so hope for the rest gonna, of oh, us. Oh, he's right? here. Oh, it's an in person thing. It's a, it's a technical it was, college. You actually look familiar. Oh, that's right. It was you a know, technical you know, college. It's a technical college, not bro. community college. I thought we were college. doing a Zoom thing. I thought we were wow, Zooming you in, Pastor what? Pakluda. Yeah. Nice to I meet see, you. I see how nicely you guys speak of me when I'm. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. so we're here with Jonathan J.P. Pakluda with. Why do I do what I don't want to do? So it sounds hey, I like I love the way you knew that title. Yeah, it was just rolled off. He was like, "Why do why I do, do what? What's I, the I don't tagline? Replace deadly vices with what life. Is, what is the tagline? <laughs> so Thank it you. sounds like based on that title, you sin a lot. I am an expert at sin. So is this it's, book just, just really, about so, like? <laughs> I, I could I could have made I could have written that book for you. This is interesting. I'm, I met with some guys this morning and I asked them. This was the question we wrestled with. I said, "Hey, how much do you think you will sin?" We met for an hour. So, how much do you think you will sin before you leave here? Oh, that's a good and question. I said, "I said everyone write down their answer." That's, okay, I like this. And so, what what What's would you guys say answer? before? I know what Kathy before, would say before we leave. <laughs> I know what you would say before we leave. How many times do you think you will sin before you leave this this podcast studio? Think of a number. Don't change it. Think of okay. a number. This is not going to be good. Okay. You got it? Yeah. You, you got it, Kathy? Yeah, I have it. Okay. What would you say? Three. Okay. Three times. <laughs> 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 She's already got them like, she knows what they're going to be. Knows, yeah. I'm going to say this Three to Nate. <laughs> I, I, I would say like infinite because I feel like I'm existing in sin. Yeah. What's I, the right answer? That's where I land. Oh. Yeah. Well, I land more like my, yeah. my homardiology bar is really low. And so that makes me grateful for Jesus. Like, I, I think that so much of what we do and like all of our thoughts in this world are fallen. And so I know if we walk by the Spirit, we do not gratify the desires of the flesh. But I also know that, that I am selfishly motivated at every turn. And so much of what I say is a desire to be liked, what I wear is a desire to be liked, um, to want, you know, just do lots of things that motives, all of my motives are divided. So if you look at any action, Right. It's it, it's on a scale of, hey, it was, you know, this much impure motive and this much pure motive or uh -huh. this much pure motive and this much impure motive. Like everything that I do is is through a broken lens. Wow. And that makes me more grateful 
for Jesus and his payment and grace, like that God saved me in spite of me. Wow. So is this I book... also agree I'm a sinner, by the way. No, <laughs> just I, three times. Well, I, I mean, I we know no, you specifically you like, oh, I might have this prideful thought or I might have this comparative moment. Yeah. I get what you're saying. No, it makes sense. So, so three and infinity okay, makes great. sense. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that does make sense. Yeah, for people who've listened to the podcast, yeah. they understand. <laughs> um, okay. Well, so is your book just about how much of a sinner we all are? No. It, so, the, I mean, it's really kind of the opposite in a way is it it talks through vices and their counterpart virtues. And so I think the church has done such a, um, I won't say bad job, but a, but a disproportionate job of saying, hey, don't do, don't watch R-rated movies. Don't go here. Don't get drunk. Don't do this. Don't think this, yeah. you know, don't buy this. Yeah. Don't be this way. And all of those don'ts have a counterpart do. And what I see in this, in John 10 is the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If you're a new believer or a non-believer, you come in the church, you might think, well, the church came to steal, kill, and destroy oh, yeah. because, because they're just, they're, they're stealing my fun, you know, they're, they're killing my good time, and they're destroying my life. And, and really, he says, Jesus says, but I have come so that they might find life and have it abundantly. And I realize that, you know, and Kathy, you do this great, and we celebrated you today, you know, there are Christians who have an amazing life, like a full life. They laugh a lot. They have fun. And so in this book, it, it, rather than say, hey, don't be prideful, it's saying, hey, what would it look like to pursue humility? Mm. Uh, don't be greedy. Right. Actually, what would it look like to live a life that is generous? Uh, don't be entitled what would it look like to live a life that is gra- uh, grateful or to live a life in gratitude? So it, it presents the vice and then it, its counterpart virtue. In history, there was something called Seven Deadly Sins. This came from a monk, Evagrius Ponticus, and then made famous uh, through, through Thomas. Through our sermon series. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> through Thomas Aquinas. And uh, it really started as the Eight Evil Desires. Well, the first half of the book deals with... Um, we, we take those seven, we whittle it down to five most common today, okay. and then we add another five that are kind of the modern struggles that have always been there. Things like drunkenness, they've always been there. But what does it look like to live a life where we're sober-minded? Mm-hmm. And what is the blessings that we receive from that when we're surrendered to the Holy Spirit in this way? Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of the heart behind it that's just, horrible. it sounds like you're describing like a really burdensome life though. Yeah. Like it's just always going to be a grind. Yeah. Like pursuing the sinful things, those are a lot easier to do, yeah. to, to, to lust, to be lazy, to, to, to drink. Like if you're going to pursue the other way of doing things, yeah. that just means your life's going to be more difficult and less fun. Yeah. There's actually a, um, on the, the cover, which I, I care a lot about cover art. Um, Which I sent in a lot. Yeah, yeah. I and do I don't know why the drawings of <laughs> the, me and you and the, yeah. the, the ocean, the ocean, um, you know, the, there's there's people and they, there's a drift. I start with a story talking about drifting because we don't naturally drift toward holiness. Yeah. Like we naturally drift toward these vices, like the, the current of the world, because Satan is the little G God of this world, the prince of the air. So he's here. He's a ruler here. He has authority here. And he's trying to pull us toward the vices. He's trying to steal life from us. And so sometimes the Christian life can can feel like swimming upstream when I think it's actually we have everything that we need in the spirit. And so if we start with abiding, we start by having our mind right, setting our mind on the things above, not conforming any longer to the patterns of this world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind, uh, we we center our life around Jesus, then I think he's the one that kind of holds us in place or, or allows us to march against the current by his strength. Colossians mm-hmm. 1 says, I strenuously contend with all his strength at work in me. And so this book, it's a discipleship book. It really is, it's not for everybody. Like it's, it's, really? no, it's, it's not, I mean, I don't, it's if really. You only sin three times. Yeah, you don't, you don't really it. need it. <laughs> it. It's really not for non-believers. You okay. know, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's not a, it's yeah, a discipleship totally. book. It's for someone who says, I, I want to make sure yeah. that I don't embrace lukewarm Christianity. Uh, it's for someone who says, I want to grow in my faith with Christ. I don't believe that I'm experiencing God as much as I should or could, that I think there's more of God out there. What would it look like for me to find that? And so that's that's more uh, of the heart behind it. And I don't like, man, this is weird because it is our <laughs> podcast and we're talking about this book. I don't care about selling books. I care deeply about helping people. Mm-hmm. And, and I want to see people find freedom. 
I want to see people find the, the fullness of joy through Christ. Uh, I'm curious. You said there were eight vices or ten? There's ten. Ten, yeah. okay. Which like which one for you, even as writing the book, was like, hey, this this was really helpful. Yeah, he started crying the other day thinking about one of them. Oh. What was it? It was, uh, what was it? It was on Friday Q&A. Was this when you guys said, hung out without me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, was it, it wasn't, drink, I, I feel like it was drinking, but it, it, I, I feel like it wasn't that. Oh, uh, no, it was. It was alcohol because I, I talk a lot. I give like I just give a lot of details about my dad oh, who my dad right, yeah. passed away in 2020. Man. And um, I just share, you know, some of his life just really honest in there. And um, and just with generational sin, like I sense a I can sense a pooling on my heart mm-hmm. yeah. in that way and in that struggle. And, and then just being a guy that's always looking for a good time and wants to have fun and, and really doesn't enjoy being, you know, the pastor that robs the fun of everyone else. They're like, oh, we better not drink, better not order a drink because pastor's here. And so, you know, I talk about a, a lot of that in there. And I think that's, mm-hmm. you know, alcohol is something that... Um, you know, our I think our demographic struggles a lot with what does it look like to honor God in the way we drink? Is that possible? And so those, you know, I give kind of a list of of ground rules from that. Really, every chapter could be a podcast series, could even be twenty podcast series because of every chapter is bifurcated in in vice and virtue. That's awesome. So, so is like the point of each chapter, like, hey, just you got to work harder. It's not that. It's it's the opposite. I mean, it really is. I'm trying to present the fullness of life that Christ offers. I don't know if I've ever told this story on here. I probably have, um, but I was in a green room once, and so you yeah. guys, you guys know my story. Well, you know, it's like rebellion and you know, drug, sex, and they say rock and roll. In my case, hip hop. And I came to Christ. How do you know what this is? I know it's, it. It's interesting because, like, when I was a pagan. You know, I would sit on the back of a tailgate or the back of a, a boat. You know, we would be wakeboarding, we'd drink and, you know, have our Bud Light and, you know, intoxicated and just kind of that drunken stupor where you're just like, I love you, man. I love you too. Man, one day, you know, one day we're going to backpack through Europe. One day we're going to see the world. One day, it's just kind of one day, but you, you know, sin robs you of creativity. So you get stuck doing yeah. the same things. It's like, no, nah, yeah, but, but tomorrow we're going to go back to the bar, back to the club, run mm. up the bar tab, do the same things, right? And then when I became a Christian, it's like, man, I began to experience the fullness of life that was so much better than that. Yeah. But I really thought Christians were lame. But like, no, man, these guys know how to party. They know how to have fun, like real fun, like fun without the hangover fun, laugh until you cry fun, your, your stomach hurts the next day fun. But one day I'm in a green room and I'm having a conversation with this young woman who really has been preserved. I mean, she really, she grew up in a Christian home. She did the right things. I mean, she dated one guy. She kissed one guy her whole life, married him. Um, you know, she didn't need to be at the party. She was kind of free from the approval of others. And she just lived a really good, pure life. I'm not saying, you know, she had never sinned or anything like that. You already have heard my theology on that. But I am saying that, that she was who you would hope your daughter would grow up to be. And she worked at the church I worked at, and she worked for somebody who worked for me. And I just, and she was really sharp. And so I was being provocative. And I, I just asked her, I said, you know what? Here's the deal. I've experienced ecstasy, I've experienced cocaine, I've experienced marijuana, I've experienced alcohol, I've experienced sex, I've experienced all of these things that you've never experienced. And here we are, and we both worship the same God, we both have trusted in Jesus, we're both going to get the the same reward in, in the sense that we're going to be with God forever in his kingdom. You know, it's like, why is your life better than mine? Because it seems like I got away with it. And I was being provocative because I knew... She would have something brilliant to say, and she didn't miss a beat, Mm. not a beat. She looked at me, and she said, I've had more fun, and I have less scars. Man. And and you can say, well, what do you mean by more fun? If you had, you know, sex and drugs and all that, and you, you know, she she would just say, hey, I, I, I have laughed until I've cried more than you. Without the fear of a pregnancy, without the fear of a, you know, DWI, Without the fear of of you know ripping someone off or someone coming after me or or sitting in the consequence of sin because there's always a consequence to sin that yeah. without the fear of getting caught more than you I have laughed until I've cried belly laughter like pure fun that life was intended for and I don't have the scars that you have mm-hmm. the the memories that you have the things that you can't shake the temptations are going to be greater for you in some ways because of what you've seen. And so I have I have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And man, I just I want you to know she's right. 
like she's had more fun and she has less scars and she wins and I've got regrets. And so sure, I'm sitting here, but what she has is is pure and more beautiful than what I have. And yes, because of grace, there's no condemnation for those who are, of us who are in Christ and we do get the reward of God. But man, she's experienced a better life. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 34 was in my head too. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. It's like once you've lived this life, Jesus came to give us full abundant life. Yeah life to the fullest. It's yeah. just better his way. And yeah. so that's really like your heart with the book. Isn't like, hey, let's make Christianity a list of don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. It's so boring. You can't have any fun. It's like, no, taste and see. Like God's way is just so much better. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I, and I feel like your book is talking about holiness, like yeah. be all these things. But I bet for people listening, like, if, I mean, you just list off so many different sin struggles. If you just look at the table of contents, everyone's yeah. going to have something. I mean, there's there's pride. Kathy <laughs> just is covered in it. Anger, greed, apathy, lust, perception management, entitlement, busyness, drunkenness, cynicism. I guarantee it, one, if not two or three or four or five of those things have been with us for years. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't seem possible to Find not. Freedom. Yeah. Like, how do I how do I live and not have greed? Yeah. And I think it's I think we focus on one at the risk of neglecting another that's actually going to take us out. Yeah. So if we if we sit in a room, imagine yourself standing in a room and there's 10 doors because there's 10 chapters. Uh, there's 10 doors and, and each of those doors represents a, a sin struggle that's going to take you out. So there's pride, there's there's entitlement, there's perception management, there's drunkenness and um, and greed. And so we think, all right. Uh, there's an, a lion that is hungry that wants to kill you yeah. on the other side of these doors. And and you're like, okay, I know he's going to try to come at me through the door of of pride, mm -hmm. right? But we don't realize that it's actually perception management. So when we focus on pride, he comes from behind and grabs us oh, wow. through perception management. And so what I've done in, in this book, right, and I wrote it with with our coworker, John Green. And, and so what we've done is we've really tried to come up with an exhaustive list. Like it, it is pretty fairly comprehensive. Like if, if the enemy takes you out, it's going to be one of these. Yeah. And as you look at the table of contents, you're going to think, oh, that one's mine. It's probably not going to be that. It's probably going to be the one you think, well, that's not really my deal. Busyness, I don't okay. know if it's going to be busyness. And then lo and behold, that's where he sneaks up on you. And so it, it's meant to give you a battle plan, again, a discipleship plan uh, as you seek to grow in, in Christ. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Why are you excited about it? I mean, you know him better than people listening. Because like, this is... Do you is, feel like he actually has something helpful to say here? Yes, this is like what I see in you. I said this earlier today, that like meeting JP and getting to know you, uh, not just like hear you speak, but getting to know you as a friend, is just like shown me a new way of following Jesus. And well, I followed him Well, I like what you said, you said today at our staff meeting. You're like, when you first met him, you were like... Oh, you actually believe the Bible? Yeah, like and I you, know that sounds crazy because you were like, like, you were like, my friend Nate does it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only people I've been around. They don't really believe the Bible, but you live it out, and yeah. then you see the fruit that's produced in your life, yeah. and it's like, mm -hmm. I want more of that. I want that authenticity that confession brings. Yeah. I want that, uh, the freedom from people perception management and, and perspective of people. So, yeah. anyways, I, I you live it out, and I'm not yeah. just saying that. Yeah. And it's gonna be really fun to yeah. read this. And see all the areas that I do sin <laughs> hey. and all the areas I need to grow into. Thanks for saying that. Thanks yeah. for your kind words. And thank you guys for letting me just come on here. Well, can, and, I, can I say something? And, and um, yeah, he wants sure. To say something so I was too. with uh, someone from out of town yesterday who doesn't who doesn't know you all that well. I know you think everyone knows you. No, but whatever. Yeah. Gosh, neat. <laughs> I mean, he kind of he was kind of aware of you. Well, can I go back to the question? Can I say something? <laughs> I'd like to. We, we say no. And he was like, hey, OK, be honest with me. Each pastor, there's like three things that pastors need to be good at. Pastors are typically only good at one or two of them. There, there's preaching, there's leading, and there's shepherding. Oh. He's like, okay, do, tell me, like, what's JP good at? What's he bad at? Like, it, yeah, just just be honest. I'm like, bro, preaching, shepherding, leading, I like, truly, hmm. I see. And, uh, no, like, I can't. I can't even. Uh, Are you gonna cry? No, I'm not gonna cry. Oh. It, I mean, it's like an A plus in all of them. Yeah, thank you. Uh, shepherding, leading, teaching. Guys, we should do this more often. I know. <laughs> Why don't we do we this more often? We actually are friends, and, and we like and, you. And, and, and we want people. This to was read a this great book. idea that you guys would have <laughs> me on today. Yeah. And I just, I want you guys to experience yeah. that. Uh, yeah. That we get to experience all yeah. the time. So here's the truth, and I mean this. It's not false humility. Um, I'm a chump from Cuero, Texas, <laughs> yeah. town of six thousand people. Grew up on a farm, 
did the best I could to, to throw every blessing that God gave me away. I'm not athletic. I was last pick for dodgeball. You uh, wore your sister's I, jeans. I was a C student, and, <laughs> and we were poor, and at times I wore my sister's jeans to school. Uh, I went to a technical college and somehow landed in, in the big city, and it is just an extraordinary grace yeah, that I get to sure. talk about God. And I truly think that God uses me to show that he can use anyone. It's not a statement of false humility. When I lay down at night all by myself, and it's just me and him, I believe that. And uh, if anybody has benefited by something I would say or, or, or write, uh, I pray that it's the Holy Spirit working through those things to bring about the righteous life that God desires yeah. in you. So it's a tremendous grace to get to work with you guys. I've got to run, but I love you guys, and get thanks for having me on. Yeah. Wow. Y'all can finish it out. Well, normally okay, we great. talk about you, but you're still in the room, so we can just right. head out. That's amazing. Wow. Well, well, I just can't believe we got to meet him today. Honestly, wow. he's really tall he's been in person. I know, he is so much taller, <laughs> taller than, what than I thought. I thought. Unbelievable. Nate, have you already bought the book is my question. Or are you going to no, wait I'm, for him I'm to give you a free I'm, copy? I'm assuming I'm getting a free one. You can't even like help him but out But I haven't yet. This is the first time I've actually like held it in oh person. My gosh. So even though like two of my best friends wrote this together, Aww. I'm like, <laughs> I better not have to pay for it. Oh but, my gosh. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll help him out. Yeah. Hey, guys, get the book. It sounds awesome. I'm Why do I do... What I don't want to do, and, and if you don't want to get it, really the short story is it's because you're a sinner. So I just saved you a bunch of time and money. So anyway, but if you do want to read it, go pick it out wherever books are sold. Yeah. And uh, I, I really think it's going to help you follow Jesus. Awesome. So. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. To find out more, visit becomingsomething.com.